uh, before we hand over uh, to our speaker. First thing is I've got to send around this list um, because I need, uh, well, essentially a register of everyone who's here for fire safety reasons. But if you also want to receive uh, more updates about the events we receive, please put down your email address as well. Um, along with that, uh, we have someone here from the uh, Sheffield University Sports Engineering Society um, who's also looking for people uh, to sign up if you want updates. <coughs> Laura there, who's done that. So I'm passing those two sheets around with some pens. Um, yeah, basically just to give you a bit of info, um, the IMACI Young Members Panels, uh, the South Yorkshire Young Members Panels, tries to represent all engineers in South Yorkshire. And we try to put on events like this, but not only interesting, but sometimes useful. Uh, so we do things like this, which is getting on for a bit of a technical lecture style thing. Uh, we do skills events, we do all sorts of different things. Um, we really are quite keen for people to be involved as much as possible, whether that just means turning up to some of our events or whether that means getting involved with the panel and helping us organise things like this, um, which, you know, aside from being a uh, good laugh, uh, is good for your CV and things like that as well. Um, so if you want to do that, then please speak to myself or any other members of the committee who are very vaguely scattered around. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll help you do that. Um, I'll just introduce our, our presenter this evening. This is uh, Cy Turner. Cy's uh, a bike designer at Kotick, which is a local Sheffield company. I'm sure most of you know that already. Um, and he's a chartered engineer with the IMAC -E. Um So a perfect speaker, I think, for this audience. <coughs> um, I think I'll hand straight over to you. Uh, let me get that one. And in a couple of minutes, we'll walk through. <laughs> we'll be sorted. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's getting there. Painful, looks like. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get going with this and uh, and see how we go. Right. Um, it's mainly just pretty pictures, anyway. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Cy Turner. I own Kotick. Um, I design bikes for a living. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about mountain bike design tonight. Um, obviously, it's a pretty big subject, um, so I'm going to just give you a flavour of some major areas. Um, uh, hopefully help you understand bikes a little bit better, hopefully debunk some myths along the way, which would be fun. Um, my background um, is in mechanical engineering, obviously I'm a chartered mechanical engineer. Um, I did a degree at Nottingham University. Um, I worked for eight years in the rail industry in uh, vehicle design, um, vehicle dynamics, FEA, structural engineering, project engineering, project management. Um, so Kotick isn't the only thing I've ever done by a long stretch. And to be quite honest, working in heavy industry was very good training for owning my own business. Um, Kotick came about about ten years ago. Um, I was downhill racing at the time, but was starting to do trail riding again. I wanted the long travel forks and the big tyres and the big handlebars and the disc brakes um, that I was used to on my downhill bike for riding around trails on. Um, I also have always had a bit of a thing for steel hardtails, uh, well steel for when you build hardtails anyway. Um, and the bikes at the time were still very uh, very retro, um, you know, didn't have disc mounts, weren't very forward looking. Um, so I knew very much what I wanted, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so with typical engineer's arrogance, I thought, oh, design a bike, how hard can it be? Um, so, so as it turned out, a bit harder than I expected. But um, I did have a good starting point. I did have an old Kona that I'd put all the bits on that I wanted to use, um, but wasn't quite right. So I measured it up, drew it out, started solving the problems that I saw them in terms of the rider position on the bike in terms of the geometry, in terms of accommodating the forks, the details like the disc mounts, all that kind of thing. Um, and looked into some materials and at the time uh, Reynolds were, Reynolds had been making um, a steel called 853 for about three or four years, um, which is incredibly high strength stuff. Um, so I started looking at using that in some uh, reasonable sections and ended up with a frame uh, which would take the long forks, big tyre clearance, all the things I wanted and turned out to be pretty light, nice and tough because the material was strong. Um, and that was the design for the original sole, um, our first product. The Initially I was just going to get one built. 
I went to speak, spoke to a guy called Dave Yates up in Newcastle, who's a very well-renowned frame builder. I was just going to get one made for my own amazement. Um, and after that, uh, after getting a little bit of way down with Dave, um, a friend of a friend introduced me to a guy called Brant Richards. Um, now, Brant was um, designing frames at the time and was working for a company called On One, who I'm sure most of you have heard of. Um, was one of the first people to do Taiwan frames and small batches into the into the UK Internet Direct, um, and we got talking and we hit it off. And he said, "Well, you know, show me what you got." So, so I sent him over a full production CAD drawing because obviously, you know, geeking out a little bit as an engineer does. Um, and he said, "You know, he was pretty blown away by that because you know one thing you do get in this job is people saying, oh, I've got this great idea for a frame,' and then they'll send you this sort of." napkin sketch. Um, so Brant was sort of realised I was pretty serious and he said, well I could get you a price for these, get you a price for a hundred. Um, and I had absolutely no plans to go into business at this point, but I thought, well nothing ventured, nothing gained. So we got a price, I worked out that I wouldn't have to put my house on the line, I could probably afford to pay the loan back if I sold <laughs> three, just. Um, and <coughs> A uh, mate of mine does websites, another mate of mine does graphics. I'm very blessed with some very talented friends um, uh, who will also work for bike parts. Very useful. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and that was it. Uh, we got prototypes in 2002. Uh, they were really good. We made a few detailed tweaks but didn't change anything else. Um, the production frames landed in 2003 um, and I was in business. Um, but it was a part-time thing. Um, I was still working full-time on the railway um, and it just grew from there because you know it was all internet direct, it was all emails, it was all very manageable. Um, but it did start to grow. We got some great reviews, we won some awards. Um, you know, another frame came along when people were asking for a titanium version. Um, uh, I kind of suddenly realised I was a bike designer so I could actually design things I wanted to design. So when I realised that I hated my road bike, um, I designed the Road Rat, which has flat bars for going fast with. Um, and that came, that all sort of, and it all started to build and grow and gain momentum. Um, all at kind of the same time as my day job was getting pretty horrid. Um, so I was looking to quit work and to do something else and my accountant said, well, you know, looking at the numbers, Kotick could be the something else. That was in 2006. So um, I've been doing this for four years now, um, full time, um, and there are now employees and um, you know people who uh, people who work for me, and we have premises and uh, you know a phone line and all those sort of proper company things that uh, you know, that kind of come along with a growing company. Um, so that's a little bit of background. Um, tonight I'm going to skim across <coughs> materials. Um, I'm going to talk about handling uh, a little bit. I'm going to talk about the SEND regulations, safety regulations that have come in. Um, I'm going to do a bit of an overview of suspension design. Um, and then after I've been talking for about probably 40, 50 minutes on that, we'll have a bit of a QA and a afterwards. Um, so, um, mountain bikes. There's me riding the mountain bike. How's that? Um, uh, materials, choices and applications. Steel. Um, this is my favourite material to work with, uh, particularly for hardtail frames. Um, it's positive, it's very, very strong in, this, in the grades that we can use for mountain bikes. Um, anyone who's used to heavy engineering will be used to using steel grades like S275, S355, you know, 275, 355 megapascals proof strength. Um, Reynolds 853 that I currently use for the sole, which is what you can see here, um, has a strength of uh, between 1250 and 1450 megapascals. Um, so it's five times the strength of mild steel. Um, it also does um, this quite cool thing uh, where it air hardens after you weld it. So the grain structure refines in the heat affected zone. It actually gets stronger um, after welding. It's an incredibly good material to work with. Um, steel tends to be chosen by people who prioritise um, durability and ride feel and strength over low weight. Um, uh, as much as you might think you're pretty rad doing your nine foot drops and all that kind of stuff, compared to heavy engineering, mountain bikes and cycling in general don't actually put a particularly high load on structures in the ground.